The first time I came to Melbourne was quite unexpected. I'm just about to head out the door and my brother calls me. And he goes, we're going to Melbourne. Are you coming? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. And he's like, well, that's good because the plane leaves in one hour. <laughs> Street performers of all kinds are collectively known as buskers. Melbourne is famous for them, so we've uncovered the stories behind these buskers. When most people think of busking, they think of musicians. But busking actually covers many types of activities. I'm Daniel Worth, and I'm a pavement artist. I busk to help fund the creation of my artwork. So during the week, I can be in my studio creating paintings or, or creating sculptures. It's always a good idea to tip yourself. Be the first one to tip yourself at the end of the day. A bit of busking superstition, possibly, but then, you know, you've made the effort. You've gone in, give yourself a couple of dollars to get started and, you know, feel good about what you're doing. <laughs> For buskers, Picking the right spot can mean the difference between a good day and a bad day on the street, especially for pavement artists. The next good spot is where there's seats people can sit down and watch you, a spot where there's enough area to do quite a large drawing but not get in the way. I think my preferred time is Saturday, maybe till early evening, do a full day, let all the musos come out and play to the staggering people down the street. <laughs> So once I get the initial sketch done, I, um, I start working on the eyes. I used to do paintings of old masters. I found I didn't really get much reaction from that. I found that doing a semi-realistic picture of someone that is famous, someone can go, come past on the street and say, hey, you know, that's such and such. I only do pictures of famous people that I like. That's fine. <laughs> because it's, it's a picture I'd, I'd want to do, I want to do anyway. As Daniel knows only too well, creating art on the street presents its own set of unique challenges. It's almost like when I'm drawing in, I'm, I'm in this relaxed kind of meditative state, even though I'm in this chaotic environment. Pavement art is, is quite impermanent. It doesn't really last more than a couple of days at a time. Combination of people walking over it. You know, it rains, the wind blows and it fades, but I think the impermanence of the pavement art is really part of the charm. I use soft pastels because to have permission to be able to draw on the ground, it has to be impermanent. We can't use paint or oil pastels or pens. It has to only last for a couple of days. 27, right? Yeah, it died pretty young. Yeah, I know all about that. We had a walker. Someone who had their heads in the clouds and uh, didn't notice what they were standing on. But don't worry. I'll be surprised if it doesn't happen at least once every time I draw. <laughs> I quite like using pastels because it's a very forgiving medium. You can blend quite easily. And the bonus is you can go back to a spot and rework it. So when someone walks over the picture, I can just easily rub their footprint out. In Melbourne, the weather changes quite a lot. You could come in on a sunny day and think it's going to be great and then, and then you get rained out. I remember one time a guy I know who sells the big issue. It started raining and I was like, oh no, I'm not going to be able to finish it. And he comes up to me and goes, you know what you should do? You should draw a rainforest. <laughs> I was like, good one, Dougie. <laughs> yeah. When I was busking a, a few years ago, some nice person gave me a, a big box of chalk. I just kept that box and I've just been refilling it with chalk ever since. Uh, you get some very nice and interesting donations. Last week a guy gave me a watermelon <laughs> on a hot summer's day, you know. It's better than two bucks. <laughs> Most other buskers might spend a couple of hours in one spot on any given day, but Daniel, he has to spend a little bit longer. I started 
this drawing about 10 o'clock this morning. Been drawing for about seven hours. Now I'm just putting the finishing touches on it. The reaction's been really positive. People have been really generous. Uh, that's been a really good day. The special thing about Daniel's work is that it's only ever a temporary part of the city. And the next time he busks in Melbourne, he'll start completely new. I remember the first time I wanted to become an artist was when I was five years old and I took a train trip to Sydney with my mother. I remember seeing all these colours in the windows, the colours which at the time I didn't know was, was graffiti or street art. And I remember thinking, wow, look at all those colours, Mum. I want to make colours too. I saw it as, as my duty in a way, or the way I was improving the world was by making grey walls nice and colourful. I also didn't know in my young age, because no one had told me that um, making grey walls colourful is actually illegal. So, <laughs> so I found out um, one, one day after getting taken home by some policeman and um, getting in trouble and I was grounded and, and I wasn't allowed to draw for a month. <laughs> but as you can see, that, that didn't have many lasting effects. <laughs>